Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio. I'm your host, Deborah Bailey. And when I started this show in 2008, I was on a mission to promote women-owned businesses and help women succeed by providing resources and valuable tips from other women and men, small business owners. In each interview, my guests speak openly about their triumphs, the scary times, and tough decisions they had to make along the way. Women Entrepreneurs Radio is about showing women how to harness their natural strengths to achieve success on their own terms. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio, and I'm your host, Deborah Bailey. I'm so glad that you could join me today. And uh, if you're listening to this on iTunes, you can also find this show on Podomatic, bbcoach.podomatic.com. And also, it's now on live sin. There are some episodes, uh, new episodes are going to be uploaded there, but also the archived episodes that used to be on Blog Talk Radio are slowly being uploaded. So there's uh, shows going back several years. So uh, that's another good place. And SoundCloud, if you're on there. Uh, you can follow the show. So if you come to womenentrepreneursecrets.com, you will see the links there. And uh, under radio in the menu bar, you will find all the links for the different platforms. So I hope you'll check it out. Whichever platform works for you would be great. And also if you're on iTunes um, and you like what you hear, please uh, take a moment and leave a review of the show because it does help with their algorithms and all the things running in the background. Uh, if you leave a review, then it's more likely that the show will be found by others, and, and that's really appreciated. And also, you can leave one on the blog as well, so that's fine too. You know, however, you give feedback on the show is much appreciated. So, we're going to get started today, and my guests. Um, have invented uh, a wonderful um, online class, and we're going to be talking about a lot of very interesting things for entrepreneurs, so um, definitely you will enjoy this show. So when Sally Koldrick from Australia and Rachel Hench from Italy met at the MIT Global Entrepreneurship Boot Camp in South Korea, a magical bond formed at first sight. They are both MIT certified to teach MIT's new ventures leadership. Sally comes from a background in strategy. Rachel is an architect turned entrepreneur. They run Infinity Foundry and both hold roles as family CEOs. They harness the power of curiosity, diverse and deep human connection and storytelling to helping people unleash their unique cocktail of entrepreneurial superpowers. Here is where they're unique. They advocate the importance of doing this mindfully and wholeheartedly in ensuring what you do is meaningful. So welcome to the show, Sally and Rachel. Glad to have you here. Thank you so much, Deb. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Deb. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Yes, I'm so glad you'd be here. And, um, you know, listeners were talking before you, uh, before you joined us, talking about all the time zones going on here. So I'm, I'm really so appreciative that they could, uh, could join me and, uh, share what they're doing. And, you know, as I've always said with the shows, it's just so exciting that we do have the technology that we can connect with people all around the world. So, um, you know, I think this is really great, and I, and I know you're in for uh, a wonderful show. So, you know, we we are going to talk a bit about curiosity and and how all this has to do with entrepreneurship, and and um, you know, I, I think it's really exciting because I don't always hear this with uh, entrepreneurial things. You know, online there's so much emphasis on, I guess, on products and procedures and Let's all just make tons of money. But this was just such a wonderful um, way to look at it in terms of really digging inside and and learning and growing and all this thing. I I think this is really exciting. So, you know, let's get started. Please introduce this. Introduce this concept. 
for us? Um, yes. Well, we're, Sally, uh, Sally and I, myself, are re- we're both mothers. So um, observing our own children has led us to look at curiosity from through the eyes of our own children. So, mm-hmm. um, curiosity, we see curiosity as a springboard that will um, project us towards discovering learning and building. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, it's an attitude we both have in life. And it's also become one of the key ways we approach entrepreneurship mm. um, through curiosity and the joy of discovery and looking at the fresh eyes with the energy of a child. So um, having discovered this sort of magical power, as it were, we really want to help others to either rediscover the curiosity that they probably um, might have forgotten during, you know, during their years of growing up, or some people have never had had the courage to explore it or they've been stifled. So that could be a new lens through which they can frame their thinking, their actions, and probably also um, ultimately expand that potential in totally new ways. One of the things, Deb, that that Sally here, one of the things that Rachel and I often talk about is how curiosity led us to each other. Mm -hmm. And we have very different lives on very different sides of the world and seven children between us. I I can only claim (laughs) two of them, five of Rachel's. And I just... I, I was in awe of her from the first moment I met her and we started talking and we have very different strengths, but they play to each other in, a, in an incredible way. And mm-hmm. we, we saw that as a foundation for a, a, a strong partnership and the fact that we really like each other helps a lot because the time zone discussion that we've talked about is, is prevalent not just in our business but in many, many businesses and mm-hmm. you have to have a lot of tolerance and patience And Mm. curiosity, you need to be curious about how you can make it work. And one of the things for us that makes it work is that we, we made a commitment to, to scheduling it into our lives. Mm -hmm. And curiosity was the starting point for all of that beginning for us. And one of the interesting things was that we both enrolled in a course independently and it was Entrepreneurship 101, an edX course run by MIT. And we've discovered this, this framework that is taught by a, a tremendous man called Bill Orlett, who has just got an honorary professorship um, at MIT, not as a professor, but as a professor in practice for his work. Mm-hmm. And what's fascinating when you actually look at this framework is that Bill has put together 24 steps to becoming a successful entrepreneur or running a successful entrepreneurial venture. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't guarantee success, but it gives you the greatest chance of success and it will help you learn when um, when to stop and to pivot. So mm-hmm. pivot is the world of entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. You need to know when to do it. But what was absolutely fascinating is that he has 24 steps under six themes and each of those themes start with a question. And this is not just for entrepreneurship. This is for any type of um, like sort of new venture. Mm-hmm. The, the, the first question is who is your customer and then it's who, what can you do for your customer? How does your customer acquire your product? How do you make money off your product? How do you design and build it? And then how do you scale if you want to scale? Mm-hmm. And we just thought it was really interesting that all of this was around questions and mm-hmm. we started digging deeper into the power of questioning and the art of questioning. Mm-hmm. And one of the things we worked out, even though curiosity is a starting point, like Rachel said, towards learning and building, what's fabulous about curiosity is it doesn't matter how young or old you are, mm-hmm. you possess the ability to unleash it. Mm-hmm. And it's just a matter of getting that ball rolling. And so when we when we thought, okay, well, how do we package our learnings up? How do we help other people, I guess, minimise their point from A to B, like the experience we had to have, which took us years of research and, and blending our experience. And so that's how the Curious Entrepreneur Online course came about. Mm-hmm. Um, the danger, there is a danger. Once it starts, it won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's good. 
I love your laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have I have to uh, you know you have to laugh at things, and I, since I enjoy it, that's even better. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, laughing <laughs> so, will keep you younger. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure it'll make you look younger though, because it usually gives you those wonderful little wrinkles up in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, as long as that, that's the only place, and I guess you're fine. <laughs> 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 so they, they only stay in one place. You're okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> <that's> why, <laughs> Brilliant! Oh my goodness! Uh, but but yeah, this this I really love this whole idea about the questions. That's really fascinating. You know, of course, if you ask a question, then you're going to really think about the answer. Well, that's what we want to encourage people to do. You need mm-hmm. to think about why you're asking a question and not ask in a meaningless way. That makes and sense. also, I think as as adults, we tend to try to look for answers always mm. instead of um, staying open to the questions. Um, you know, young children will start saying why and you'll give them an answer and they'll say why again until you're completely <laughs> exhausted because it's like they want to dig to the root of, you know, whatever, whatever it is. And mm-hmm. it's sometimes not as an adult to actually handle a child's questioning. Here, I think, um, you know, as, as adults creating things, Often we try and find a definite answer probably too early and sometimes keeping the question open might bring more possibility than trying to look for an answer too quickly mm. and closing, you know, closing off opportunities by doing so. The patience point comes in there as well and, and that's something I've had to learn a lot. Um, mm-hmm. You have to be very patient not to, like Rachel said, not rush into a preconceived idea of what the answer should be or what you'd like the answer to be. Mm-hmm. And that's a fatal mistake. And can in a startup environment, you know, a proper innovation-driven business, that can be the difference between a product failing and succeeding mm-hmm. in the early stage. If you if you um, if you don't listen to your customers and you don't really get to the heart of what they're trying to tell you or what they want or what they don't want, importantly, mm-hmm. then you know your competitors can beat you to it. That's an excellent point. You know, I've, I've had experience in in corporate environments particularly when I was in IT years ago and a lot of the big companies that have been around forever. And it just seems that they don't really have, or, you know, at least at the time they didn't have that going on because so many times people were afraid to ask questions for fear that if they didn't have the answer, they'd be in trouble. (laughs) Yes. And that's a very interesting observation. And I, I used to work at Accenture and, I was very entrepreneurial. Um, that term didn't exist when I was there 10 years ago or mm-hmm. starting 10 years ago. Uh, but I think people need to get over their fear of asking or their fear of failure, quite importantly, in corporate environments as well. Because if you conform to what is asked of you in your job description, you're mm-hmm. limiting yourself and your potential so massively. Mm-hmm. And a job description is a something that should be interpreted as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah. we need to encourage that thinking more and more in in these environments because um the big corporates they're, they're heavily process driven mm-hmm. and you could spend your whole time getting squashed mm-hmm. within within those processes and and we really think that that's one of the reasons we have this very broad audience for the online course is Mm -hmm. because have building an entrepreneurial mindset is something that's as valuable for a five-year-old as it is for a 55 or 65 year old Mm -hmm. I saw a post on Facebook within within a a group yesterday about a woman who was 79 and starting her first business and I just thought how fantastic wonderful Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And she was making boxes, bless. But it was, you know, it was it was so fabulous that her age was not a restrictor for her, mm. and it should be. I agree. I, I think that the, it should be encouraged more than it is. But there is, you know, at least in in the culture here, it just seems so rigid that there is just the idea that well, if you're this age, you should do this, or this age, you should do that, and mm. <laughs> you should do that. 
And I think it's so discouraging because, you know, as we're, we're seeing, technology is changing everything. So nobody can really just sit there anymore and say, I'm not going to adapt. But do you know, interestingly, it is slightly off topic, but mm-hmm. yeah, I think that the technology piece is a challenge in its own right. Because if we think, if Rachel and I went through the different things we've tried <laughs> and tried to package in and, and, and use tools that both work for both of us that will work for the business, you could spend your entire work day faffing around with different tools and technologies. And so I think you also need to, you, you need to use the technologies that allow you to communicate effectively, but you need to be mindful not to waste your time on things that are detract, distracting you from what you should actually be doing, which is either building a product or a service um, and refining that and testing that mm-hmm. over immersing yourself into your laptop. <laughs> <laughs> We're yes, all guilty can, of it. <laughs> you can get lost in technology. Yes. You're right. Only you talk about that. It's probably a good segue, actually, Rachel, for the for leading into curiosity and your emotion and health. Yes. Uh, before I, we do that, I just wanted to say that you know, um, asking questions is disruptive, and it can be threatening also to establish structures, mm-hmm. which is why I think there is this res- resistance to it mm-hmm. from some institutions and from some parents as well, because. Asking a question um, means embracing something totally new and different, and that's that's what ch- children do so easily. Mm-hmm. And it's it's an art that we sometimes learn to just put aside because it's it's uh, it's not comfortable. So it's also to do with being bold and pushing pushing out from you know a, a safety zone. That's why I think um, curiosity is the, the the source for learning but it's also you know on, on, on the reverse side it's also where people who are teaching or educating need to be just as curious as their students and so that's that's you know being curious is about questioning learning and challenging I think that that's the bit where probably it gets curbed so much curiosity is challenging mm-hmm. assumption it's challenging sometimes conclusions that have been compounded over time, you know, when you think of some great discoveries that have overturned previous beliefs that were push, pushed forward through curiosity, then we need to think that you need to be very brave. Yes. To push mm. through with certain questions sometimes mm. and move places that are not you know, not necessarily comfortable for, for those asking them or for those needing to answer them. And, and this is where we talk about the course being um, unique in that it looks at all of these aspects about mindfully and wholeheartedly committing to entrepreneurship in this way so that you have tools for life. Mm-hmm. We stress that point a lot. And it, it's one thing to go into entrepreneurship, get burnt and go, it sucks. <laughs> and it's one another thing to go into entrepreneurship, not, not have your tools and waste all your money and go, it sucks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? But if you if you look at it in the way that Rachel and I have, that I think we've pivoted at least four times with what we've been doing. It's like, wow, we know what doesn't work as well as it could. And that gives us an opportunity to explore something new. Mm-hmm. And that mindset is something that is invaluable as a coping mechanism. And I, th- I think if you think about mental health issues associated with with just general life nowadays, people mm-hmm. need to learn how to cope with things better and not let them uh, take over their entire mind mm-hmm. or prevent them from doing things. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a it's an interesting coping mechanism as well as it is an educational tool. That's interesting too when you look at it that way. <laughs> yeah. I think so. You know, I, I took a, a look at, at your your course and how it was broken down, and and it seems very much like a journey for a person to work through. Yes. Um, you know, which was so fantastic because I'm ne- I was talking to another entrepreneur, uh, another show about it being a journey that people go through inside themselves also. We're delighted to hear you describe it as that. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think what's wonderful about the, the word journey is that every single experience 
is unique and what mm. different people at different stages of their life will take away is different. And for, for us, it was a very sort of cathartic healing experience to put it together and marrying everything that we believe in. And there's a term called user innovation. So innovation that comes from filling a problem that you've had. Mm-hmm. And we married that into it. So Rachel and I talked about what, what was missing when we left school, for example. And had we known about entrepreneurship showing our age, um, <laughs> sort of 20 years ago if it was part of the curriculum and and the career counsellors knew how to identify what those strengths of potential entrepreneurs were would we have gone down the path of corporate at all or would we have gone down in Rachel's case would she have even become an architect Mm. or would she have become an architect entrepreneur you know I I think now is this extraordinary time to be living because Mm -hmm. the world of entrepreneurship is not just you know a bricks and mortar fish and chip shop on the corner it's about so much more than that and I even talk about the example of my father who's a retired eye surgeon and in back in the day I expect if he'd known about the technologies that were available now his work would have been diluted and he would have been researching and doing other work in innovation at the same time so if you think of those types of examples that are available now But I do stress that there is great value in having experienced people on startup teams. I know this is, this is a, this is a um, digression again, but we, the value and importance of having people with experience of building and managing teams and um, forming deep human connections over a long period of time and problem solving Mm -hmm. adds immense value. And it's a, it's actually kind of a massive plus. For people of our age and older who are thinking, okay, well, is this for me? Because the value that you can bring from your experience is infinitely valuable. Mm. <laughs> it, it's it's yeah. the way you can handle situations and get people out of predicaments and uh, and give advice and mentor mm-hmm. and coach and help and actually start to teach and um, create a culture of mentoring in those businesses Mm -hmm. because that's what gives longevity and heart to the personality of the business. That's very true. And as as you're saying that, you know, I I remember when I was in IT and and just starting because I changed careers from copywriting into computers and I remember learning the software and this all these things and there were, of course, mistakes I made and things I didn't know and I felt oh my God, you know, I don't know this, I don't know that, because, you know, of course, you're starting anything over, you you feel kind of stupid at times. But then after a couple of years passed, and and some of those people who were there before moved into other groups, and then I was kind of one of the people who knew. And, like, newer people were coming and asking me questions, and then, yeah, I know because and how they know, because I either made that mistake, or something blew up, or... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> You've experienced the pain. Yes, <laughs> I did. <laughs> like steer away from the pain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And, and it was, the interesting thing was the only way that you would have been able to be that experienced person, as you're saying, is because you went through all those things. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You didn't avoid them. You know, you, you went through the pain, you went through the experience and now, oh yeah, I know what this is about. Now you can mentor someone else. And I think a lot of times that gets lost because people don't want to experience those pitfalls. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and or, or, or as Rachel was saying, they're not curious enough to uncover why they're feeling the way they're feeling. Yeah. Yes, but that, that's another thing. You see, um, the curiosity is also, I think, means turning in, inwards as well mm-hmm. as outwards. Mm-hmm. So um, the curiosity that's out, outward focused is about discovering what's around you, the world and the opportunities. And, you know, Sally and I have built our course very much around turning inwards to find your own in, emotional compass because our feelings And even our bodies give us a lot of signals that we tend to ignore or brush aside and that are very, very important in the entrepreneurial journey. So, for example, if you're having a feeling of overwhelm, sometimes you just keep trudging on and, you know, you just clench your fists and and keep going. And then you, you risk burning out at some point. Mm-hmm. Or your your body might be telling you something, you know, an ache that you're feeling, and you you might have been sitting or at your computer for hours on end and feeling very tight somewhere. And we don't we 
we often don't listen to our bodies until it's too late, until they've, you know, broken down somewhere mm-hmm. and then we're forced to stop. But it, it'd be, it's, it's, um, it's very important, we think, to be nurturing and looking after our bodies as we take the entrepreneurial journey. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it'll be a very short-lived experience and one that, you know, um, will carry with it so much negative energy as well as positive energy. Mm-hmm. So being, being able to turn inwards and listen to our um, to s- symptoms before they become symptoms and finding mental and physical spaces for our self-expression and being able to recharge, reboot, um, you know, finding a routine or finding something in a week that will break up the rhythm in a way that you can find you can find an inner source of of nurture actually helps you as an entrepreneur to not Mm -hmm. force your your resources into you know into into breakdown mode now of course we we focus the whole module on that with several chapters on how to how to see to your your own needs basically and how to listen to what your emotions are telling you I think the other one, Rachel, that would would sort of fit there is also around the diversity piece and uh, and how important diversity is for, for problem solving and ideation and innovation and what what comes with diversity is team conflict and we talk about how you can how you should mm. think about or how you could think about addressing team conflict and mm. not be frightened of it because you get to grow as much as the team gets to grow. Mm-hmm. And the, as much as the product gets to benefit from diversity in, in the team. And one of the reasons that, I mean, I, I being in a global company, I, I, diversity to me is a given, mm-hmm. but it's not everywhere. And when you see the, the way that these global entrepreneurship boot camps at MIT, for example, work, I mean, when we were in South Korea, it was just mind blowing. The, the activities that were participated in, the different thoughts and ideas that came out, you just couldn't have, you couldn't have bet um, that they were as wonderful and creative as they actually were. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just incredible to see the, the magic and even, even the angst and the disruption that comes from it. I, mm-hmm. I mean, there are certainly times where you'd walk past to the bathroom and go, uh-oh, argument, uh-oh. <laughs> 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 and, and you kind of you look towards and then you look in a different direction and go this is part of the process and it's absolutely mm. critical mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you have to let it ride its course and a lot of people if you're in corporate a lot of people would interrupt yeah oh, well, let, let's see if we can you know get a resolution it's like no you need to let it play its course mm-hmm. sometimes there's an argument because someone shouldn't be in a team Mm-hmm. Sometimes there's just a mild disagreement that's been escalated because people are bloody exhausted. Oh, sorry, I said that. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> um, but, but do you know? Do you, I know. I, it, I feel it. I feel that. Anger. And Rachel and I have words. And, and it's like, oh my god, do you know what? I'm so tired. I'm so sorry. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Yes, even, I mean, even in our, our small team, Sally and I, like, we're so different. Sally's, um, you know, Sally's very, very expressive, and sometimes, um, in a in a in a very difficult you can way say that. that I that I'm not so <laughs> used to, and she expresses her positive emotions with with great force, and she does as well with her negative emotions. So. <laughs> well, no, I've learned to. I've learned to with the negative emotions because. In, because when you're an entrepreneur, everything is up to what you express. Mm-hmm. And when you're in a corporate environment, you, you've got other people and infrastructure you can lean on and go, do you know what? I don't have it in me. I haven't got, I'm, I'm, I'm picking my battles and I'm fighting for X, Y, Z over ABC. Mm-hmm. But when you're in an entrepreneurial environment and you're feeling discomfort internally, you have to have that conversation mm-hmm. or things will explode or implode. Mm-hmm. And that is mm-hmm. just that's probably one of the key lessons that we really want to push out of this. Um, the, the, the message that we try and share with, with the world is mm-hmm. you need, you owe it to yourself to be honest with what's going on internally and externally. Mm-hmm. And it just, it's, it's very sad when people don't live to their full potential because they they don't feel bold enough. And mm-hmm. I guess it's probably time for a big plug of um, one of the books that really was a catalyst for us doing this. And that was Brene Brown's 
Daring Greatly. Mm -hmm. And so Brene Brown's Mm -hmm. Daring Greatly, uh, I read it and then I gave it to my husband to read and he raised some points with me and we had a row. (laughs) (laughs) And he said, said, I'm doing what the book said. And I said, I'm not. not Oh, no. I'm not ready. Oh, no. That's (laughs) so you know, we're, we're as guilty. This is as much a journey of discovery for us as it is for other people. But mm. we, we feel it would be selfish and wrong for us not to share what we have learned. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific, though. What you're saying is so is so true. And, you know, like I said, going back to corporate, just kind of referencing how a lot of times a corporate culture would kind of get people to conform to just kind of sitting there and not objecting and not having an opinion. Mm -hmm. And I just think of how people come out of that environment and then they want to go into business. And, you know, we, we, we bring that conditioning out with us. Yeah. That's a whole other podcast, Deb. <laughs> yes, I agree. I agree. That's a big one. That's a big um, one. I, the, the, the journey from corporate to entrepreneur is, is long and tough. Yeah. And learning to have, uh, to be fully responsible for everything that's going on in your world and not having a legal team or an IT mm, department yeah. is 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 a huge mindset shift and you can't mm. underestimate it. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, corporate professionals thinking of entering this this space. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was another reason why we have an audience. I, I, Rachel and I often joke, I mean, with a background in strategy and marketing, but we decided to actually have four or five different target audiences for the course because mm-hmm. we think that it spans that far in value. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it... And then, you know, the soft drink, Coca-Cola soft drink can be drunk by everyone. I don't see why having an entrepreneurial mindset can't be had by everyone. Mm. (laughs) That's a good way to look at it. Most (laughs) tagline. Yes, there you go. I just just made that up. I don't even drink Coke. um, (laughs) I do drink coffee a lot. (laughs) I do too, so I I approve that. (laughs) Um, so I guess I guess we'd love, we'd love to actually throw it to you if you've got really specific questions from your mm-hmm. experience. If maybe there's if maybe mm-hmm. we can flip it on its head and see if we can do something to help you. <laughs> well, it's well, it's been it's been a certainly been a journey for me, and and you know I I that's that's particularly why this this really resonates so much. But I think right now what what really um, catches my attention is I know for a lot of um, like for instance millennials here and I'm, I'm assuming around the world there's a sense of well I want to go and do my own thing and not follow maybe that path of intercorporate or something like that but then I, I find that there's a lot more pressure now particularly with the social media that you know I know I didn't grow up with um, the way that they did where you're seeing these images of everybody successful <laughs> everybody's rich and everybody's showing this glamorous life and sometimes I get the sense that that maybe people coming out now may feel like wow if I'm not if I don't don't leap from square one to square ten something's wrong with me so the people that you interact with and I guess it probably doesn't matter the age but do you feel that that maybe they're exposed to a world now that's saying success is supposed to be instant? You're not supposed to really go through these processes? Very interesting question. Rachel, did you want to comment? Oh, yes. I was thinking more and more, though, there's an acknowledgement of failure and vulnerability. I think mm. there's, um, you know, this um, the invincible entrepreneur and gold plate, the sugar-coated story is slightly outdated now because mm. people – speaking up about their failures they're laughing about them they're learning they're sharing their stories and Mm -hmm. at at the MIT boot camp we even one of the alumni organized an event where you know people were sharing all their all their mess ups basically Mm. and that was one of the most powerful sessions we we had together actually Mm -hmm. was just learning from each other's mistakes being able to draw conclusions together and and show that the the entrepreneurial journey is not 
it's not just a happy fairy tale. It's full of what we call warts, mm. you know, all the ugly parts and all the, the difficult parts, the parts that are painful. So yeah. I think, you know, I think it's not, it, it, it's no longer like this, just this picture perfect image that people do have to live up to. And I think millennials nowadays, they, they will actually be able to look beyond that. I think looking at my own children who are slightly older than Sally's children, they are, they seem well equipped um, for, for a life where they might be, you know, inventing their own professions. They, they're not mm-hmm. going to just be you know, lawyers or doctors or researchers. They're, they're, they're probably going to invent something. And so I think the, the, the entrepreneurial mindset is really relevant in that context. Yeah, I, I'd add to that there's two, two points. Uh, one was some recent research in Australia suggested that millennials will have 17 jobs across five industries in their lifetime and one of the things that to me that I mean I've I've, I've had you know a few jobs but certainly nothing nothing like that Mm -hmm. and one of the things that you do need when you when you move around in jobs like that is some core skills Mm -hmm. and the ability to be agile in the way you adapt in your environments and this entrepreneurial mindset really does provide that keeps you very open-minded and have, having a growth mindset. And the other point to it is I, I really think it depends on what the definition of success is. And there is, there's, there's just this, t- in my opinion, too heavy a weight on success being defined by financial success. Mm. And most entrepreneurs know that it is um, slow coming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and you also need to work out if that's what your motivator is. And mm. In the last year, I a year and a half, I have learned more than I probably have in twenty years. Yes, I'd say the same for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because I mean, it's it's because a we're open to it, mm-hmm. it um, we're seeking it, and yeah. we're culminating it into mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. So we're actually exploring all the different elements of our life and our personal strengths and our experience and being vulnerable and. And look, there are times when I go, I say, Rach, I'm, I'm just too tired. I'm too tired. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we'll, we'll have a call with someone. I go, I just can't do it. And she's brilliant about it. She's like, I'll take it. It's fine. It's her, her morning. And I'm just like, I haven't got it in me. My kids have been up since 4.30 and I'm knackered. <laughs> and, and then you wake up the next day and you have a call like we're having this. And it's like, how awesome is what we do? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so the definition of success, I think there's a success of mindful richness mm. and um human connection richness. And we 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 speak to people all around the world each week and uh the 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 way that helps us shape and frame future conversations is is invaluable. Mm. And we know we're very lucky, mm-hmm. but then other aspects do stress us out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> That's a very honest answer. <laughs> very much so. I think that's a perfect, the perfect description of, of, of how it could be, uh, you know, a bit of this, a bit of that. It's definitely a, uh, um, can go in in many directions and um but if people enjoy it and they love it and they are passionate about it that certainly helps when you have those times you just want to throw your hands up and run, <laughs> and run away so <laughs> but please uh share with everyone where they can find out um about the courses and where they can find out more about you yes um you you can find uh us online on our website which is www.infinityfoundry.com slash courses where you, so from there you can go and browse the the courses that we've set up and also from the home page and the footer we're able to navigate to see our our story the personal story of how Sally and I met and how we started in the foundry we also have an article section, which is our blog, where we've, we've been sharing stories of other entrepreneurs that we've met during our, our journey together and that we've written about. And we've just 
connected um, with some new guest bloggers who are posting to our to our channel. So we're very excited about that. Mm -hmm. And finally, in the footer of this website, infinityfoundry.com, at the bottom uh, right corner, you'll find all our social media buttons. So we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And um, listeners there um, also have a written um, interview on the blog, womenentrepreneursecrets.com, under the How She Does It features section. You can also read about them and, and, and find links there as well so um there's a lot of information that you can uh, find out more about this and of course visit um uh, their site and also uh, check out the online learning because it's really going to teach you a lot as you can tell from our uh <laughs> our conversation maybe you know some things you may not have thought about uh about this uh new world you could say that we're we're in right now so um you know we have about five or so minutes left here but you know what are some other some other thoughts that you'd like to you know share with us that maybe we didn't cover or anything you want to expand on oh look I'm, <laughs> we can talk for hours don't i know <laughs> There, there is, there's actually a, there is actually a quote that we put in the article and, um, Abraham Lincoln. I think that entrepreneurship and your, your long term success in being able to ride the roller coaster as we describe it really does depend on preparation. And unfortunately, right now, a lot of people go headstrong into it and they're, in doing so, they may be minimizing their learning potential. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and and making mistakes that they could be avoiding. So I think Abraham Lincoln's quote was, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe. Mm. So like with all things in life, preparation really is important. So true. And, and that, that's such a great, uh, great quote and a very interesting point because, you know, I know, I know I'm seeing online all the time about, you know, people kind of saying, oh, learn this one thing and, you'll be successful and <laughs> do these four things and you'll be successful like I am. And yeah. it just makes me want to cringe. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, for people who are well versed in this stuff, it is difficult because we see through it and it, we're all about transparency. Mm -hmm. So we see through those, those, those programs and um, they all have a wonderful place and they're all really important, but you need to know what you're getting yourself into and you need to know what objective you're trying to serve, you know, in, in doing so. And I think it's, there are many people that we're not trying to pray to the vulnerable. Mm. We're trying, mm. we're trying to prepare the, the, the curious. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah. I, I think, I think a lot of, a lot of that comes from people kind of wanting to, think that there are sure steps that they can take and I can control this. And as you said, when you're asking questions, sometimes you don't know what the answer is going to be. And that mm -hmm. could be very scary. <laughs> yes. You know? Absolutely. I was going to say, um, it's, it's very important to have the step-by-step. -step. So you do have an overall roadmap, mm -hmm. but I think it's also very important to stress that um, you can't be putting off your um, sort of, putting on standby your life and your happiness in view of reaching a goal that's really far on the horizon. So what we, we really want to help people to do also is to enjoy every step of the journey and not just focus on where they want to get to because then they'd be missing the whole part of the, you know, the traveling part. And so we think it's important to be living every moment fully, whether it's, um, you know, um, putting all your efforts into what you're doing at that moment, but still maintaining that perspective that allows you to savor your moment, even if it's a difficult one, even if you're, uh, it's a moment that, that you're taking to dive into um, a, a negative emotion that you're exploring. So, for example, just to make a, a personal example that we, the two of us do, is sometimes we, we call them the elephants in the room. So whenever one of us has a slight bad feeling or an issue we, we've made this agreement to always address it and talk about it so that's that's also to do with curiosity we sort of go and look at what's not working and mm -hmm. we're very open about it and we we pull it out and that's the only way that we can create good energy out of something that could be potentially uh you know an adversity or drawback or a problem mm -hmm. so that's that's a way of digging deep 
and quickly into something so that we can move forward with joy and enthusiasm yes. and positive building energy. Mm. So it, it's about living fully every moment and not saying, you know, I'll be happy when I've made my million and that might be next year. <laughs> and what happens mm. until you get there? Yeah. Yeah. 2075 was our target, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> completely with with um rachel and it's one of those things that it's i I don't think we've ever gone more than two nights sleep without the rumbling settling and um, (laughs) you know we we do have to have the confront confrontation and you actually have to allow the time to fully process it Mm -hmm. and and make sure that it doesn't become toxic because what is the number one reason people leave corporate environments or other jobs? Bad leadership or a toxic environment? Yeah, I can agree with that. So, I mean, there are obviously other reasons, but they're mm-hmm. the two primary ones. And why would we be building a business and allow toxicity into it? Mm-hmm. That would just be crazy. Mm-hmm. So it's a responsibility that's part of our, I, I guess, our code of conduct, mm-hmm. our written <laughs> informal code of conduct. Mm-hmm. And if something doesn't align to our values inherently, then we either of us have the right to just say no way. And it takes practice because it's really scary in the beginning. The first time we did it, I thought, oh, my goodness, what's going to happen now? <laughs> I thought we'd work it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that's true because we're not really conditioned. I, and, and I think that happens a lot with, with women you feel like it's a confrontation and now, oh, people aren't going to like each other anymore and maybe this is, I should be quiet because maybe I'm, I shouldn't say, you know, you, there's all these things yeah. going on in your head that has a lot of times nothing to do with, with the actual situation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Practice. So now, you know, now I feel much more comfortable about just getting it out when, when it needs to be. Mm. Uh, so Sally and I say look, we need to have a rumble and that's what we go and do. Mm-hmm. And, spend some time doing that and clearing the air and kicking the elephant out of the room and moving on mm-hmm. really that's a, that's really a digital cool. rumble just fyi <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like we were in mud or something for a <laughs> we don't physically wrestle no <laughs> uh, so, so I, I guess if we're, if we're wrapping up then i've got time to squeeze in my all-important yoga class this morning which is a bit fabulous oh great <laughs> <laughs> see that's great because people you that. know yeah because because you you tend to i know i do you tend to sit in front of the laptop and then it's like time goes by and like wait a minute i was supposed to go exercise or i was supposed exactly. to go do this for me mm. and you don't because you feel like oh i gotta keep going i gotta keep you know it's so i'm so glad to hear about what you're saying about the health part and all of that you know, that I know that I often end up forgetting about it or thinking it's not as important because you're so driven to get to mm. this place that all I have to do is I have to do. It. And then, you know, what you're saying is, is a totally healthier way to look at this whole thing. And then I, I really like that much better. <laughs> <laughs> much better. Well, it, like seems it. Like it's, it seems like it's a theme that's come out of some of your other podcasts as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, we only get one. Yeah. We only get one vessel. Yeah, Ooh. you're right. You're right. You're right. We need to that. look after it. Yeah, also and because it, you know. know, I've seen that the times I tried to just crash through stuff and not go take my walk or not go do my yoga session, mm-hmm. I I actually end up being less productive. Mm-hmm. I mean, so it's, it's an investment you make. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it's, true. It's actually rational. Yeah, it's actually quite funny. One of the one of the ladies, Rebecca Fielding, who is the CEO of um, Travel Unwrapped, DNA Unwrapped, and we actually feature her in our course talking about unconscious bias. Mm-hmm. She's she's an extraordinary woman. She's a former human rights lawyer and now cultural travel expert. And um, and it's funny because she, Rachel, and I all go right I'm off to yoga. <laughs> and and. It's, and it's just like, right, we all do yoga. What sort of yoga do you do? Can you do a headstand? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're going to do this really intricate pose, the three of us, when we next get together. We are. <laughs> yeah. I'm putting all over social media. 
it's true. We'll do a yoga podcast one day. <laughs> that was <laughs> terrific. From the studio. <laughs> I'm delirious and I'm ready for my coffee, I think. <laughs> well, this has been a really wonderful conversation. I'm so glad you could join me, Rachel and Sally. It's been really good, really enlightening. I know it everybody's going to learn from this and, and really know that there's a better way to do it. And it's, it's really exciting. So I want to thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. This has been great. Thank, thank you, you so Dad. much. Dad. It's been and thank you for what you're doing. It's, 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 yeah. it's powerful. Don't underestimate it. Well, thank you. I, I kind of fell into this by accident because I just wanted to meet some other entrepreneurs. <laughs> so oh. <laughs> That's how I started. So you, you never oh, know. <laughs> never know. Where curiosity takes you. That's true. <laughs> See, that's it. <laughs> See, I didn't even catch that one. <laughs> I'm already learning. <laughs> Yay! Okay, you've, got a, you've got a job to ask 10 brand new questions today. <laughs> or tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I better write them down. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so things. much, Deb. We really, really appreciate the opportunity to be here and to share. Well, I, I thank you. I think I really do because, as I said, this is good stuff for people to learn about. And um, so, everyone, I know you enjoyed the show, so please make sure you share it on social media. As I said, leave feedback, um, visit Sally and Rachel's site, and take advantage of those uh, resources. And, um, you know, let us know how you like it. And I hope that you do. So once again, from Women Entrepreneurs Radio, with your host, Deborah Bailey. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. You can also join in the conversation on Facebook.com slash Women Entrepreneurs and on the website, WomenEntrepreneurSecrets.com. And don't forget to listen in on DVCoach.Podomatic.com and on iTunes.